Hi, and welcome to Travel Adventures with Island Girl, also Sailing Adventures with Island Girl. Well, today we are going over the gear list for Aconcagua. I am leaving for this mountain in about two more weeks, so I'm going through my final preparation for all the gear I'm packing. Mount Aconcagua is actually the largest summit outside of Asia in the Western Hemisphere. It's almost 23,000 feet. Oh my gosh, so this is going to be the highest that I've been to. So let's go through our gear list and see what we pack for Aconcagua. This is going to be almost a one month expedition. So take a look at the first section of what we're packing. Okay, you can stop the video and photograph this or, you know, anyhow, this is the first section. And there's two routes to use on Aconcagua. You can either go the Polish route or the normal route. I'm choosing the normal route. And it's still going to be a little over three weeks. But on the normal route, you don't need these like you do on the Polish route. Because we are not using ice axes this time. Or I'm not using the, um, the Himalayan suit either. So all this is going up. Not to be used. So normal route. First thing we're going to cover is feet. Then we're going to move to socks, legs, and body. So first things first, what do we wear on our feet? Normally, normally these are the boots I would wear for any type of trekking all over the world. But unfortunately, this time I'm packing light, like ultra light, like taking the handle off of your toothbrush light. Um, because the first section, the first few camps, Yes, I have porters, or the portage is done with, you know, donkeys, mules, all that for the first few. The last few, all the way to the summit, yeah, it's on you. So I'm carrying my own pack, could weigh up to like 40 pounds, because you have to also shuttle some of the gear from the camps, the water, the cooking supplies, the tents, things like that. You'll be shuttling things up and down the mountain. So it's not just your gear you're carrying, you're carrying some of the camp's gear as well. So you gotta be in like primo, primo shape to carry your gear. That's why I'm packing very, very light this time. I'm trying to actually keep it under 35 pounds for everything. So bye-bye leather boots or my other favorite pair, these boots. Not bringing these because they weigh too much. So the boots I'm actually packing are gonna be these. These are really, really lightweight. They'll get me through the first few sections of this trip. After that, we still are getting up to the higher elevations where we are going to be cold. So on our double insulated boots, this is what I'm carrying. And double insulated boots are gonna weigh between like four and five pounds. So I think these are like five pounds almost. So these I can't get away from. You gotta bring some really good boots that'll keep your feet warm. And then for summit day, summit day, I'm taking out the WAPAs. These are really, really good triple insulated boots that have the, the built-in built in gaiters, okay? So these gaiters all come with it. And then you just tighten everything down right here and that is going to be my footwear. Also, I usually bring Tevas, but I have to weigh everything because I'm just not gonna be walking around camp. I'll put my boots on originally. Next thing, after feet, we covered all the boots that we're gonna wear, crampons, okay? We're gonna be running into some alpine, uh, alpine snow, uh, ice, uh, glacial areas where we will need to put crampons onto our boots. And you want to make sure that all your boots have that little indentation here that will take hold of your crampons. And there's many, many different types of crampons. For instance, you can get this kind of crampon. Okay, you can get this kind of crampon. Or you can get this kind of crampon. Now for this particular uh, expedition, we're going to need this kind of crampon. Okay, these are all well and good right here, but you notice this little orange thing in the middle? That is called an anti-balling plate, okay? Which these guys don't have. And what happens is when you're trekking along, all the snow and ice will accumulate underneath here, 
and ball up and just get compacted and you'll have to stop every now and then knock it out or you know use your use your pole to knock things out this way things don't build up underneath your crampon and so this anti-balling plate you have to have this for um, this particular expedition and then it comes in a nice little carrying case so you're not stabbing everybody or wrecking your clothes or doing that so anyhow we covered feet socks oh socks yes so with all of my items okay socks are the most important in fact i buy all new socks every single time i go on an expedition but the socks that i totally prefer among all other socks for at least my um my double and my triple insulated boots okay the way you wear these is i always start out with a liner sock okay i prefer wool over synthetic because my wool liners they will last forever they don't they don't start to get bally they don't flatten out they don't you can wash them and they bounce right back and they wick away the sweat they don't smell weird or anything like that my synthetic ones though they just didn't hold up they got holes in them they're turning weird colors they just didn't hold up and then I wear my ski um, ski socks on the top of it. And then on top of that, for my triple M slated boots, there's a little booty that fits over top so that you're really, really snug in your boot and everything's really comfortable the whole time. So socks, really, really important. Considering it's about a three week trek, okay, and you're not gonna have like washing facilities or anything like that, I'm bringing about 10 pairs of socks because socks are just like my most important thing. So we covered all this, feet, socks, legs. What do you wear on your legs? Because you'll be going from like regular nice weather all the way up to, oh my God, I'm freezing. I think I might get frostbite, but we're gonna guard against that, okay? So on your legs, what I like to wear is I start out with leggings, okay? Leggings are great under everything and they're just really comfortable i would totally not bring any type of shorts no shorts we're doing this in like late december early january most of january depending on the weather how long this is going to last so you want something again synthetic no cotton you shouldn't have any cotton with you this whole trip because cotton kills it doesn't it doesn't dry fast it doesn't wick away moisture it maintains it so lots of uh i'm bringing about three pairs of these and some are lined with fleece they're really comfortable so this is your first layer um if you're wearing like underwear or anything like that for the women um i usually will get like a little pair of stretchy stretchy shorts or something or just go commando you know you really don't need underwear the whole time but this number one and the way you're gonna pack all this stuff is you're just gonna roll it up really, 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 really tight, each item, and it's going in a dry bag. So all your clothes, and I actually start sectioning everything off so that you're not like combining your cold weather with your regular stuff in the beginning. I have everything in sections. Uh, so all my really, really cold summit gear is together, all the mid-range gear and all the starting out gear is pretty good. So after your leggings is going to come your trekking pants, okay? Trekking pants are these lightweight, lightweight pants, little stretchy, pockets everywhere. And you can take them apart and make shorts out of them if you need to. But these, these can just be worn by themselves. They can go over top of your leggings or anything. So this is your second layer right here. Third layer, okay? This is when you're getting up to the cold areas. This is your fleece, your fleece pants, okay? And I prefer to have zippers down each side so that you can quickly take them off and get them erect off of you know not on your boots you don't have to take off your boots you can just unzip each side they come off quickly and you can like redo everything without having to take your boots off so we got leggings trekking pants these but you um if you're wearing these you can uh you can forego the trekking pants and just do leggings and these and then on top of that 
you want your windstopper pants, whether it's Gore-Tex or any of these other modern names that they're using for wind stoppage material. But these happen to be Gore-Tex. I prefer these. Again, they zipper down each side. Really, really nice. Wind stop. And it also is rip stop. So in case I get caught on something, it's not going to tear. But these are pretty good too. So you want one pair of these maybe one pair, one or two pairs of the fleece. You want more of the leggings and the, um, the trekking pants. So we've covered what covers your legs now. So um, also an extra layer, maybe that permaloft stuff or something with like down in it, but that is gonna forgo the, um, the fleece instead. Other than that, body. We get to the body section. What are you going to wear on your middle? So what I usually start out with is, of course, girl stuff. Okay. And then my, my preference is a really, really lightweight wool. A wool, you know, just t-shirt, but this is really, really thin. It's really, really nice. Wicks away sweat, doesn't smell, holds up really good. Other than that, I'll use, uh, it's almost like a surf guard, you know, or rash guard material, stretchy, really, really thin, and you can wear it underneath everything. So that's my first layer I usually start out on. Uh, same with this. This is another first layer thing. It's really, really smooth, really thin. Some of them will be lined with fleece or the light fleece. And these are like, go right against your skin, base layer, really nice, wicks away sweat, comfortable to wear all the time. Because guess what? You're not getting a shower every day. No way. You might, in a whole month, maybe get a shower at the max three or four times. Yeah. So, and, and you even have to buy the shower. You have to buy a shower ahead of time on different camps that you're coming to. But yeah, shower facilities, pretty much non-existent. So pick clothes that are not gonna smell, uh, yeah, that'll last for a while. But over top of that base layer, what I like is the fleece layer. I go for really, really thick fleece, really nice fleece. So. I'm, so what I'm gonna do is base layer, I'm bringing about five of these right here. This is for the month, you know, five of these, okay? About four or five of these guys, okay? And again, you know, you can use the, the wool, the thick wool, you can have something in between there, another jacket, you know, something lightweight like this type of windbreaker jacket to wear after that, you know, but you wanna just do layers. So layers, most important. And then the top layer, okay? This is the most important, your parka, okay? This is gonna go over top of everything else, okay? Lots of pockets. You want, you want the really, really thick, really, really thick, 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 thick lots and lots of down, okay? So, once you zipper it, there's also an additional layer over top so that wind won't go through, and this is the type of wind stoppage material. Then, you're gonna hook it right here, and then you have this over top. But, you're not gonna be just like this. No, no, instead, we're gonna go on to the next thing, okay, for right here. We've already covered the first, second, and third layers. This is the next thing, okay? This is going to cover your head, hands, other items, and first aid kit. So, in going through here, head, sunglasses, goggles, all that stuff. I always bring a normal pair of sunglasses, but then I have glacier glasses. Those are always good as you're getting up into the upper uh, areas, the upper altitudes. Then, goggles, okay? Goggles are very, very important because there's a lot of dust, wind, um, the glare from the snow, from the glacier, everything. You wanna be able to see everything. Uh, just, you know, just like skiing. You want a good pair of goggles. These I used on Kilimanjaro. These were just great. You don't have to, I have the really nice expensive ones, but I don't wanna scratch them. And these, these are a little more rugged. 
So I'll go with those guys. Also, another thing to think about is cap. You want a warm hat. You want the balaclava, buffs, helmet, and headlamps, okay? So let's go through that a little bit. When you're trekking up, when you're first starting out, okay, what I normally would use is just, just a little boonie hat when you're starting off the trek before you start getting to the cold areas. So this will keep out the sun. You got your sunglasses on. Also, buffs. Buffs are very, very important, okay? This is what you're gonna be wearing with your sunglasses and your hat just starting out the trek. Sun, it's extremely dry here and the sun's gonna be beating down on you all day. You're already gonna have sunscreen on, but it's a good idea to just cover all the skin you possibly can, okay? So as we're getting up in elevation, it's starting to get cold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna don this, okay? We want to wear something like this, okay? Tuck it all in. Then over top of that will be these guys, okay? But then, as you're getting into the upper elevations, you have to do some trans uh, transverses or, you know, go through some areas where lots and lots of falling rock is. So you want to have your helmet on, you want to make sure everything fits great. Then you put your everything on just like that, okay? You want to be warm. You want to be secure. You don't want to get injured on this. So talking about helmets, okay, and balaclavas, okay? So you can either choose one like this, or you can use the buff right here, or when you're not wearing your helmet, here's a balaclava. You can just wear something like this, keep you warm, sun out of your eyes, whatever. So, but right now, the helmets, there's all kinds of helmets, but if you're going to be wearing a helmet all day long, all the time, notice this is my favorite helmet, okay? This has a lot of padding on the inside. You can wear it all the time versus this one. This is not going to be really comfortable. So make sure you have a comfortable helmet. This one actually has like little vents in the back, all that type of thing. So you want the most comfortable helmet to wear that does the job that you need it to do. Okay. So now, okay, we covered the sunglasses, goggles, cap, warm hat, balaclava, the buffs, the helmet, headlamp. Woohoo! Okay. So you're trekking along. It's getting dark. Your headlamp. That's that's important, but y'all know what a headlamp looks like. So what do I do with my headlamp? Well, I can't find a headlamp. So where's my headlamp? See, and that's what you need to do in the dark. Have your headlamp with you. Well, anyhow, we know what headlamps look like. So next, the next thing is, ah, okay, hands. Okay, we're gonna cover what goes on our hands. So right now, when I'm just regular trekking, when you have your poles each day, I'm going to use gloves like this, okay? Your fingers are free, everything. It grips your pole right here. You can operate your phone, whatever. As we're getting up in the higher altitudes and it starts getting a little chilly, I have these wool ones you know, where you can still operate your phone and everything else, and it's a little warmer. But then for summit day, and when we're getting up to the really, really cold areas, you wanna wear your liners first, the wool liners. And then inside here, I have a lot of like fleece and everything to keep your hands warm. So you wear your liners first, then I have these. They're leather here, but then they're a mitten. And these fit really, really good. They have the gauntlet sleeve on them so that you can tie it in and make it come up a little higher. They're all adjustable. These are so warm. And you can fit little hand warmers in here too. So really, really nice, really nice gloves. Okay, so that's what I would go with. Um, you might wanna bring like two sets, but since I'm going like extremely light, you know, I'm just going to bring what I showed you guys. Then, after gloves, 
Okay, we got hands, layers, gloves, hand warmers. Those are kind of optional. Next thing, snacks, telescopic poles, okay? My poles, when I bring poles, okay, here's these guys. You want the telescopic ones, the ones that break down. These happen to be carbon fiber. They're really, really light. But I also bring a spare pole because years ago, I had packed my great expensive poles. And guess what? I open up my gear bag. One is completely broken in half. Couldn't even repair it. Nothing. So I was stuck with like one pole the whole expedition. So this time, I just have an extra pole just for the heck of it. Doesn't weigh that much. So I bring three poles just in case. Anyhow, so each time you have a group that you're packing, you put everything in here and you roll it. You roll everything really, really tight to get it in there. So we got the snacks. Snacks. Oh, yeah. What do you take? Whenever I go trekking like Kilimanjaro, Everest Base Camp, Aconcagua, um, I'm not one to eat the local meat. Uh, I'm not vegetarian or vegan or anything like that. Or, you know, I pretty much eat what's on the menu because I know that they try hard and they bring it all up there. So I'll eat what, what I want to eat. But I don't know where the meat came from. I'm not from that country. Uh, same with water. You have to only drink boiled water or put the iodine tabs and then the little tabs that take the iodine and taste out. But it's always good to at least know where everything came from. So for my snacks and for my other stuff, I pack beef jerky. That's like my number one thing that I pack. Um, so I got beef jerky going on. Then here's another thing. As you go up, okay, and when you're really, really unclean the whole time, uh, don't forget the baby wipes. Baby wipes, essential for everything, okay? Then, ice axe, we don't need that this time. Insulated mattress. What I'm doing, uh, our value is not the best. Our value means uh, how thick it is, how, how, uh, how it'll keep you warm. Okay, in the past, uh, it's not, you can have an inflatable mattress, but if you're rough with it, it's going to pop. And unless you want to sit there and repair your mattress, this, this is usually what I go with. And I also have a negative 40 degree sleeping bag, which looks like this. It's this Whopper right here. Really, really big, puffy, thick. It's really, really nice. Well, I got a couple of these that are tried and true and keep me warm, even when I'm sleeping on the ground. And if it comes to, worse comes to worse, I'll just get my clothes out and put them underneath. But this is what I start out with, okay? This is what I put down. Then I'll put my uh, my sleeping bag over top. And if I'm cold, I'll, I'll put clothes under me or anything. But this, this weighs like, I think like 12 ounces because remember we're going light this time okay so then we got that we got that what's the next thing oh yes yeah, sleeping bag i went with a negative 40 degree bag um you might not need to be that warm but i get cold easily and in case it is zero degrees or the wind chill is insane, I always want to be warm. So I go above and beyond what I need to do. Um, your backpacks. Now, since we're traveling really, really light, I went with two really, really light backpacks. Okay? It's essential that you have two backpacks because the first one, you're going to be carrying all your gear in it. And make sure these fit you like a glove, like you have tried this on and you've packed with it and you've put in. Um, I have been training with 35 and 40 pounds. This is like an ultralight pack. This is an ultralight pack. This carries, uh, I think, 60 liters. This carries about 55, 60 liters. Okay, these are both size small because that's my body size. For a backpack, you need to size your body to your backpack and make sure it's very light and you have to adjust it. Women 
um, for your backpack, check this out. You have to get straps that will come in like this that have like more of an S shape and everything will be adjustable across here. You guys, you have to adjust your backpacks because you want the majority of your weight right here on your, I think it's your ischial tuberosity or the bones that stick out right here on the top of your pelvis. You want the weight to be right there, not on your shoulders and neck because, oh my God, that'll be like for a really, really bad trek. So two backpacks. Then the duffel, okay? This is the duffel. Everything starts with the duffel okay gigantic gigantic duffel you could fit a small child in this duffel okay so this duffel has been again everywhere with me all over the world and it has i think i have to repair it with some duct tape here and there but this is what you pack let's go swimming ah! every single item is going to be packed in these the dry bags okay then more dry bags, okay? And once you have everything rolled and really, really tight in your dry bags, then they go into your duffel, okay? And what I normally do too, I, um, I'll pack everything in the duffel and then send it on the plane. Instead, I keep my backpack out. I will only make it as large as a carry-on and that is what I pack my most expensive gear in because this will go with me on the plane. I've had so many instances where my luggage won't show up for a few days or it went on a totally different plane. I'm going to like Indonesia to climb something. And I'm like, oh my God, where's my gear? So thank God I always bring. So what I'll probably do is I'll pack, I'll do all my really, really expensive stuff in the backpack that I take on the plane with me. I'll bring, you know, like a change of clothes, my really nice boots, my really nice parka, everything that will fit in there just in case you have to replace things. You can do it quickly because your most expensive things were brought with you. Another thing um, to remind yourself is, what do I do with them? Okay, well, here's some more stuff. Do not forget, these are big items. Okay, this is the next section. You always want to bring your passport. You don't forget that. And what I normally do is I put, I have like a little bag that I carry underneath everything. I'll just strap it across my body like this. Got my passport. Got my uh, big deal. A copy of your insurance. Not your regular health insurance or the stuff you have, whatever country you're from. I have global rescue insurance. This is the kind of insurance that you use on expeditions. Uh, like if you fall off a mountain, if you need to be rescued by helicopter, if you need to be flown out somewhere. Uh, yeah, this is the kind of insurance that you need. So I make copies of everything. I also make um, copies of my passport, your visas, all your um, customs and immigration stuff. Also, you want, um, you want everything incorporated in your wallet. You want extra money. Maybe hide some in your um, soles of your boots uh, that's always on your person. Chargers, okay? What I normally do is I carry a lot of electronics with me too. Uh, so if I need to charge something, what I bring, this is a little heavy, but this is called the Big Blue. And you can attach this on the back of your uh, your pack and it will charge anything as you hike. And it's really, really good. I use this on sailing uh, stuff too, but this is good. I also carry one of these guys. It's like a GPS satellite tracker so that everybody back at home, in case I don't have cell service or internet for a few days, which, <laughs> We're out in the middle of the Andes. I don't think we're going to have much. So these are really good for all your friends, family, and significant others to keep up with you. They can pretty much, you can give them the link. They can figure out where you are in the world and they can actually watch you in real time or within the 24 hours or seven hours, the last 10 minutes, whatever. So they know that you're still alive and breathing and where you are. 
Another thing, these, okay, the, uh, the adapters. So whether you're from the U.S., Europe, you know, Asia, wherever you're traveling to, Africa, you don't forget these guys so that, you know, your electronics can get plugged in. Another thing, okay, you are going to need these other items right here. Um, depending on uh, how high you've gone before, whether you're used to high altitude or what, I am not. So I'm not going to tell you to take anything, but personally, I, I take Diamox when I go to high altitude, anything above 15,000 feet. I usually do that, but since Ak um, Aconcagua is such a dry area, it's extremely dry uh, environment, they tell you that you really shouldn't because um, Diamox is a diuretic, which makes um, you have to keep hydrating yourself because you lose a lot of water. So consult with your doctor and see if that's a good thing as a preventative for high altitude sickness. Also, make sure you bring lots and lots of sunscreen, lots and lots of lip balm, okay? Another thing, you will want a luggage, a luggage lock, okay? Because these guys fit where um, on your duffel, where the zipper meets, you lock it in like this. And it's no big deal because TSA or all the people at the airport have a little thing they'll fit in here, they'll open it in case they need to do a check but bring a few of these. Um, also, personal first aid kit, okay? What I normally do is I have like little aspirins, I have moleskin, oh my gosh, for everything, some band-aids, some neosporin, some gloves, just the things for like minor stuff if you get hurt. And then also for eating, for all that, you want two, two to three Nalgene bottles, okay? That's what I normally bring. You wanna also bring a thermos, okay? Because everything else, as you get higher in altitude, it will freeze on you. So you wanna have a thermos that they will fill up in the beginning of the day because you don't wanna use sometimes these guys, it'll be a rock of ice and you can't deal with it. So you want these guys. Um, no, uh, no camelbacks. That's just extra weight and everything will freeze. Um, sometimes I'll bring one of these that um, as you pour it in or drink it out, it's already filtered. So you don't have to worry if the water's been boiled or anything like that. Um, anything else? Anything else? Oh, yes. Here's where my lights were. So this is where my lights were make sure you bring all of your cords okay because i doubt if you have other cords um so these cords will fit onto my solar charger this is the light i'm using that it can be recharged and then this guy this is another type of light that i got at like the dollar tree for a dollar so who cares if this gets messed up well i think i've care uh covered just about everything because everything's off the table also, in my little snack bag, I also include little things like this, goo, um, also Pedialyte, um, little drink mixes, because you will want to hydrate a little more. Um, that's about it, I think. Anyhow, oh yeah, camp towel. Don't forget that. You'll need a towel. And I think I covered all the bases. Anyhow, see you on the mountain. This has been Travel Adventures of the Island Girl and Sailing Adventures of the Island Girl. Woohoo! Aconcagua in less than two weeks.